But I'm glad today that we are all part of this Joshua generation, young and old, amen? And I want to be here to encourage the kids to reach their potential, to be everything that God wants them to be. But for every one of us today, God's got a purpose and a plan for our lives. There's a lot of things that have tried to block us out and tried to stop us, but I thank God that the Holy Ghost is still tugging at us. Amen? How many people love the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, I'm asking you today to have your way. Exalt the name of Jesus. Exalt Jesus in this house today. That Jesus would touch people's lives. and Lord, that we would come alive in the river. Lord, that the life of the Spirit would flow deep into us again. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You know, we're, we're, it's an interesting thing because this book is an amazing book. Amen? This is an amazing book and it's full of promises and it's full of stories about men and women of old. It talks about revival. It talks about healing. It talks about deliverance. It's the greatest how-to book you'll ever find. It'll tell you how to overcome. It'll tell you how to live victorious. It'll tell you how to rule and reign in Jesus Christ. It'll tell you how to live on this planet above every circumstance and every situation. It'll show you how to triumph over the devil, over everything that he throws at you, that that will not stick, but you'll just, it'll just wash off you like water off a duck's back. Amen? And we can learn to win. We can learn to be victorious in Jesus' name. And in this book, in this believing and things like that, there's a gulf, a, a, a tremendous gulf that you and I have all got to cross. It's a gulf that is between reason and revelation. Unfortunately, we've all got this thing that we call a brain. And when we hear of the miracles and when we hear of the things that God has done, our reasoning many times jumps into gear and tries to dismantle it tries to break it down and say, well, that really didn't happen. They say that that's a great story in the Bible when God opened the Red Sea, that at that particular spot where they crossed was only six inches deep. Well, I don't know, it just gives me another miracle how God drowned an army of soldiers in six inches of water. <laughs> but our reason comes in. But you and I are people of the revelation. Amen? We're people of revelation. And we read something and, and the, the truth of it touches us. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I want to say this too. It says you shall believe and your believing will make you free. You shall receive and in the receiving you shall be made free. Only the Word of God can stimulate your measure of faith. Only God's Word can stimulate something on the inside of you that will ignite something that out of even despair and discouragement and broken famine, whatever it might be that's in your life, as you get a revelation, as the Word of God touches your life, it will stimulate the measure of faith on the inside of you that will cause you to rise up and say, I don't have to be like that. I have a Savior who set me free. Only God's Word can stimulate the measure of faith. Doubt and fear will stop the flow of God's anointing power from reaching you. Let's get rid of of the obstacle that stop the flow. There is a river, amen. There is a flow. There's something there. Let the wind of Pentecost blow again, amen. Let the wind of Pentecost blow again. You guys are very quiet in this place. Can I hear an amen? amen. Can, can I have a bit of encouragement? Can, 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 can you put the applause sign up on the, on the thing, please, every now and then? just so that I know that you are okay in this house and, and that I don't need to call the funeral director or, or, or somebody. Get one of those things, you know, those things that the, they put on your chest. 
<laughs> I want to talk to you this morning about being more than a conqueror. Oh, that's good. Oh, uh, uh, I want to talk to you this morning about being more than a conqueror. Oh, amen. I want to say to you this morning, Satan is defeated. Oh, praise God. Glory to God. We didn't even have the applause sign up. Jesus went to the cross and performed the redemptive work. It was to conquer Satan for you and for me, not for himself. It was to conquer Satan for you and me. The revelation of this amazing act of re redemption is in the Bible. <laughs> it's in this book, amen. The story of our redemption is in this book. You have to read the book, amen. You need to read the book and find out what God says about you and not what the enemy says about you, amen. Not what reasoning says to you, not what doubt says to you. You've got to read the book and believe what God says about you and it will set you free, amen. It will triumph over every work of the enemy. The revelation of this amazing act of redemption is in the book. You have to read it. I believe that it reveals what God has done for us. Jesus, what Jesus won for us in that amazing but terrible hour. As we were coming around the communion, as Mike was sharing the, the horrible, the, 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 what Jesus went through to pay for our redemption the price that he paid and, and to be able to come and, and, and stand at the foot of that cross this morning and, and look up into his gaze and, and look into his eyes and see the eyes of joy. Because the Bible says, for the joy that beset God, he endured the cross. Amen. Yes, there was a crown of thorns upon his head. Yes, there was blood trickling from his body. Yes, his body was smashed. But I want to tell you, friends, there was a smile on his lips and there was a smile coming out of his heart that says, I'm doing it for you, hallelujah, that you might be free, that you can rule and reign on this earth, not suffer everything that the enemy's done. Read all these things that Jesus won for us. Jesus died to conquer Satan for you and me. Paul gave this revelation in Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to read some of this stuff because it's revelation and it's real. And as you read this revelation, and we know it only so well, but I want to tell you, friends, we need to read this passage many, many times. We need to read it and read it and read it. Therefore, so it says in 1 and 15, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not get, cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Friend, if ever there's an hour, we need the revelation knowledge of our Lord and Savior and what He did. Amen. He is not this gentle Jesus, meek and mild. He is a mighty warrior. When he comes back, he's not just coming back as a little baby, but he's coming back as a king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. He's coming back as a champion of champions. He's coming back with a sword in his hand. Hallelujah. And he's going to come back with a voice that's going to shout, Come, follow me. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you into the greatest battle you've ever been in. The battle that we win that we might know Him, that we might know Him and the power of His resurrection. Amen. To know Jesus, friends, to know who He really is, to know this God. Man, there's so many stories and so many pictures and so many songs, but friends, He is a champion of champions. Amen. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And listen to this, friend. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? I thank my God that Jesus rose again, triumphant o'er his foes. 
But I want to tell you, friends, you and I need to know the power that has been poured out towards you and me. Amen. He said, on the day of Pentecost, you shall receive power. You shall receive the anointing. Amen. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And my God, that same power that raised Christ from the dead, that same power that endured Jesus with that power who went around doing good is today pointing pointing towards you. Amen. There is a river, hallelujah, and it's flowing towards you and me today. A river of fire, a river of revival, a river of power, hallelujah, a river of healing, a river of anointing, a river of deliverance, a river of whatever you need today. There is a river, glory to God. It's flowing towards us today. There is anointing that you and I can have. What is this exceeding greatness? What is this exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe according to the working of His mighty power? Everybody say mighty power. Which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His own right hand in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Amen. Jesus, you are the head of this church. Hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. Above him, there's no other. Hallelujah. Jesus is the only way. Glory to God. Amen. Is it okay to get a little bit excited here? Jesus, the Christ, defeated Satan. And he rose again and was lifted far above all principalities and demonic realm. Ephesians 2, 6 says that he was raised up, to, has raised us up together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Today, you and I are in him. His victory is in us. Colossians 2.15, Jesus Christ has spoiled, everybody say spoiled, spoiled, principalities and powers and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it, in the cross. Jesus made a show of him openly. He triumphed over him. He, he wears the victor's crown. <laughs> He wears the victor's crown. I want you to have a look with me in the book of Romans, chapter 8. What an amazing thing. Friend, the book tells you the answer. The book shows you what to do. It tells you what to say. And it's it's an amazing scripture here. It says in verse 31, What then shall we say to these things, these things that come against us, these things that that try to pull us out, what are we going to say? Come on in. Come on in, devil. I really feel, I really enjoy being depressed. Come on in. Friend, many Christians, that's what happens. Come on in. I enjoy feeling sick. I get a lot of sympathy. I get benefits. Oh, what are we going to say to these things? Come on in. I really enjoy this feeling so depressed. Depression is a wonderful thing. Oh, come on, get a life, amen. What are you going to say to these things? What, what are you going to say? Where, where was I? If God is for us, who can be against us? I got Millie excited, man. With a little bit of luck, I might get a couple others excited in this house. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 
Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. I thank my God today. God is justifying me. Amen. Who is he who condemns? Is it Christ who died and furthermore also rose again? Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written, for your sakes we are killed all day long and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, than any other created thing. Is there anything else shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord? Amen. And then he says, I tell you the truth. I'm not lying. The Word of God is the only thing that will tell you what you can have and what you can't have. Uh Uh-oh. Just tell me what I can have. Don't tell me what I can't have. (laughs) But it will. It'll tell you everything that you need for life and for godliness. It will tell you the way. It will show you the way. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. I am persuaded that nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. I am persuaded that God has said that in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And I want to tell you, friends, I am persuaded that that is what God's going to do. I am persuaded that God is building an army. I am persuaded that His blood is being shed and poured out upon this nation of Australia. I am persuaded that this nation of Australia, the great south land of the Holy Ghost, is going to know a move of the Spirit of God. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I am not persuaded because of my natural thinking, because in the natural it seems stupid. But I want to tell you, in the realm of the Spirit, I know because I know because I know because it's written. Hallelujah. It is written. Somebody's people tell me, Neil, we win in the end. It's, I've read the last page. I want to tell you, friends, I read every page of this book and I want to tell you there's victory in every page. Hallelujah. Even poor old Job going through the misery, he said, let the weak say, I am strong. Yeah. Well, that might have been Joel. Anyhow, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> how many people like this book hey have, oh, I've got Psalms here somewhere have a, have a look at Psalm 103 oh yes who oh, bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me glory to God oh, somewhere here oh here it is bless the Lord oh my soul And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals some of, (laughs) all of your diseases. Oh, number four, who redeems your life from destruction. Oh, Smithy, you were going for destruction, weren't you? In jail twice. You terrible, terrible man. But the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus will never, never, never lose its power. It can wash and clean even you. (laughs) For it reaches to the highest mountains and it flows to the lowest valleys. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood will never lose its power. Hallelujah. It washes, it cleanses. Glory to God. Friend, I want to tell you, 
You could not have been worse than me. I needed the blood. I needed a Savior. I needed one that could redeem me from my life of destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. I could have an altar call on that right now in this church. For it reaches to the highest mountains. Oh, what an amazing, amazing task. It says here in verse uh, 11, As the heavens are high above the earth, so great is His mercy towards those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far He has removed our transgressions from us. Phil, where's east? That's east. I wouldn't have a clue. I can guarantee you, I can any east. That's east. They're all east to me. <laughs> that way. You know, if that way. <laughs> Phil, Phil's got to get it perfect. He's going to race out and get his calculator or whatever you call it. <laughs> How you know what? I can keep if I kept going east. I can just keep going forever. And ever and ever and ever. That's how far he's removed it from me. But he says, you put your hand to the plow, don't turn around. Because you see, that's east, but west is just behind me. And I praise God that my sins are behind me. The enemy wants you to turn around and look at your sins and your mess again. But friend, don't turn around. Keep your eyes going east, amen. Just keep your eyes going that way. Keep your eyes going forward. Keep your eyes going ahead. Don't let the enemy turn you around. Don't let him try and get you back into that, that, that cesspool of junk that Jesus delivered me from. Hallelujah. I am redeemed. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb. Oh, we've got this church going now. <laughs> Glory. What an amazing, amazing thing. As far as the east is from the west. Yet Psalm 78, 41 says, Yes, again and again they tempted God and they limited the Holy One of Israel. Friend, I ought to tell you there is a great gulf between reason and revelation. There's a great gulf between how you feel and what God says about you. And the enemy wants you to turn around and look at yourself. And there's times, friends, and I want to say many, many times where the enemy tries to get you to go back and think and see how horrible and how messed up you were. But again and again, my Savior is making intercession for me. He's standing there beside his father. They're saying, look at him. He's having a go. Somebody once said to me, and now it's indelibly printed in my mind, two minutes of embarrassment may save a life from eternity. And some people, they think I'm too shy or I'm too embarrassed to talk about Jesus or to say something, two minutes embarrassment may save a life from eternity. And friend, for that reason, I will become a fool for Jesus Christ. I will jump on chairs. I will spit. I will shout. I will jump. I will run. I, I ran around this church with that walker the other day, glory. <laughs> Whatever it takes, while I've got breath, I will praise Him. While I've got breath, I will do whatever I can for the King of Kings because He's so amazingly wonderful. Amen. Don't tempt the Lord your God. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not fear. I will not fear for you are with me, Jesus. Joel. Sorry, it wasn't poor old Joel. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. 
He has given us hundreds of promises that we might receive them. Amen. Don't let doubt, don't let your brain. Our God is an awesome God. Don't let what God's done for you stop you. In the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, there was a city besieged. 2 Kings 6.24, a famine. Syrian army had gathered around it. They'd cut off their supplies. People were feeding on donkey's heads. I want to tell you, friends, there's a lot of people in churches today feeding on donkey's heads. Tell you the promises of God are not for today. Don't speak in tongues. You might offend somebody. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't lay hands on the sick. Glory to God. I don't know what they're doing with the doves dropping, but anyhow. Miracles are over. The Holy Spirit's not allowed in church. He might offend somebody. Told you about my mother. So I spoke in tongues. I didn't want anybody to talk in tongues. Somebody spoke in tongues as loud as I've ever heard. On the way home, Mum said, I thought that's the end of it, but she got saved that night. On the way home, she said to me, she said, Neil, I love your church. She said, do you? She said, yeah. She said, what I really love was that Italian man could get up and pray. <laughs> People were eating their babies. The king blamed the man of God who wanted to cut his head off. I hear the, the soldiers coming towards the man of God. Elisha, all the, all, the, all the comforters would have been around him saying, I told you to shut your mouth. Told you not to do that. I told you not to do this. Told you, told you, told you. Come to cut his head off. He really could have got discouraged. <laughs> He really could have got very disappointed. Could have thought, that's it. They're going to chop my head off. But instead of that, friend, he said, Hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> Send to somebody and say, Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Tomorrow, about this time, Barley and flour will be sold to the gate for a shackle. But the doubters said, God would have to open the windows of heaven for such a thing to happen. You know what blesses me? When God moves, sometimes, many times, He uses the most unlikely. He wasn't looking for the great orator. Stood there with his robe across his shoulders and oh, praise God. <laughs> you like the stance? <laughs> if, I, if I stood here long enough, I could put a bit of water in I could make a fountain out of me. <laughs> <laughs> He's not looking many times to the ones that have got that many degrees. They call them Dr. Fahrenheit. The Holy Ghost fell on four leprous men. Lift up your hands. Say, fall on me, Lord. Fall on me, Lord. Come on, touch me again. Touch me again. Fall on me, Lord. Oh, let me be that one, Lord, that hears the voice that feels the anointing power coming upon us. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Hear the word of the Lord. And I want to say this, friend. I believe this. As I was preparing this message, 
I felt as I wrote this, this, this word, hear the word of the Lord, and I, and I wrote down here, change is about to happen. Hear the word of the Lord, church. Change is about to happen. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord, Sunshine Coast. Change is about to happen. Hallelujah. Hear the word of the Lord. Change is about to happen. Amen. Bring it on, Lord. Change is about to happen. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, faith it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. I want to tell you, I, be, I believe that God's about to reward. He's about to pour out of His Spirit. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Lord, pour out Your Spirit upon us. Must believe that He is. Jesus has won the battle for us. Jesus wears the victor's crown. He has triumphed over sin, hell, and death. Do you believe that today? If you're here in this house today and you don't know Jesus, you've never ever met Him. I don't expect that you'd realize all about Him because you've never met Him. But don't make an assumption in your mind or in your logic before you meet Him. Don't just listen to other people those religious people. Come to Jesus, friend. Give Him your life today. If you're being hurt or broken, discouraged, disappointed, feeling rejected, whatever it might be, give Him your life today. Come to Jesus again. And surrender to Him. Call upon Him while He may be found. Come unto Jesus. I want to ask you to bow your heads with me. Lord Jesus, touch today. If you're in this house today and you've never ever received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're in this house today and you know if you've drifted away from that old rugged cross and your life has caused destruction, He wants to deliver your life from destruction. You might be self-destructing. Come to Jesus. Give Him your life today. If you're not sure where you stand with God today, just come to Jesus and give Him your life today. You're in this house today and you're not sure where you stand. Or you've never given your life to Jesus. Or if you've gone astray, but you want to come back to Him. Would you today acknowledge your need for Christ? Say, I need a Savior. I need somebody that loves me. Nothing can separate. Your sin does not separate you from the love of God. You haven't done too wrong that you can't come back to Jesus. Just while our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, if that's you today, and you want to come back to Jesus, or you want to come to Jesus, would you just quickly slip up your hand? Acknowledge that today. If that's you today, would you slip up? Good on you, man. Good on you, son. Good on you. Just stand to your feet. Come out here. I want to shake you. Come on. I'll come over to you then. Is there anybody else? Just aware this morning that there's a lot of people here this morning and you just want that fresh touch. I see people being in like a desert. Dry. I'm even, right now, my mouth's all gone dry. I'm sensing that dryness. Yet inside you there's been that Wanting, wanting water, wanting, 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 wanting water, wanting. I've got news for you today that there is a river. 
is flowing into that desert right now. And in that desert, the flowers will bloom and you'll blossom again. We're just going to stand to our feet. Those ones like that, Linda, we're going to pray with you again. Just come this morning. You, you know who you are. You've been like in a desert. And you want that fresh river to flow through you again. Flow through you. Can I say this? We sing a song here. I'm not asking them to sing it now, but I think we sing a song here. <laughs> flow through me. Mighty Holy Spirit flow through me. But, you know, you don't have anything because you ask not. Ask of me. Ask and you shall receive. Just come today and ask him to touch you. Fill me afresh with your mighty Holy Spirit. 